The national average for a gallon of regular is up $1.30 a gallon compared to this time last year. That's a 62% jump. Uh, granted, remember this time last year we were in the throes of the pandemic, so demand was low. But compared to two years ago, November of 2019, we looked it up. With normal demand and driving habits, we were still paying 82 cents less a gallon, $2.60. So what can be done about this? Remember what the energy secretary said when asked about increasing domestic production. What is the grand home plan to increase oil production in America? <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> that is hilarious. Well, not everyone is laughing. The U.S. is producing about 1,600 fewer barrels a day now compared to the height of domestic production in March of 2020. Even Senate Democrats are asking President Biden to address the rise in gas prices, 11 of them sending him a letter demanding action suggesting we tap into our strategic reserves. But the experts we've spoken to here on this broadcast say that probably wouldn't help much anyway. So what will? Probably not this. The Biden administration considering closing a pipeline that runs from Western Canada to the Great Lakes states. Michigan Governor Gretchen Whitmer is on board with that. It carries more than half a million barrels of crude and 55% of Michigan's propane. And that, of course, as winter approaches. That Delivery, by the way, is per day. Our current energy secretary, who laughed at the thought of boosting energy production to ease pain, is, by the way, a former governor of Michigan. So what would the impact be of shutting this pipeline down, and what's the likelihood? For that, we begin with Scott Hayes. He's Toledo Refining Company, governmental affairs manager. I know it's a busy day for you, Scott. We appreciate the time. Let's start. There's a deadline tomorrow. What are the chances they shut this off? I think the, the, the chances are slim. Look, the administration does not want to lose more good paying union jobs. The administration cannot want to disproportionately harm people living in a marginal income. They cannot want to disrupt complex supply chains that deliver the chemicals that we make at our refinery to uh, chemical manufacturers, which is the third largest industry in Ohio, by the way, that make the everyday chemicals that everyone uses for your clothing, asphalt, fiberglass, medicine, makeup, uh, your iPhone. Uh, there's no end to the, the, the chemicals that we use every day, plastics to store your food in. All of that would be disrupted if you shut down this very uh, constrained Midwest market, and it would be devastating to the Midwest, which has already been hollowed out uh, from good manufacturing jobs, from decades of, of trade policies that disadvantaged us. Let's talk a little more about the impact, Scott. We know this pipeline is a major source of energy for Ontario and Quebec. How much oil do we get from this pipeline here in the States? And to your point, what would the impact be without it? Well, it's, we all kind of feed off of each other. So that line comes in, it brings about 40% to the region. That includes uh, the Midwest states, uh, Ohio, Pennsylvania, Indiana, uh, Illinois, Michigan, of course, and then into Ontario and Quebec. Uh, there's no way to replace that. We're at a disadvantage in the Midwest because we don't have access to the coast. We don't have access right. to world markets. What? So closing that line uh, is, is a very, very big mistake. What, what do you think it would do to gas prices, Scott? I think you would see sustained high gas prices. I think you would see sustained high prices for heating fuels. I believe that you would have uh, the price of everything grows up. You know, not only when the price of transportation does the price of everything else go up, it's correlated to inflation, but also, uh, as I mentioned before, the, the disruption of the supply chain would be hard yeah. to replace. I don't know how they make up the chemicals that we produce. Well, it sounds like the concern here, and we should get to the why, Scott, is uh, an easement that allows for this pipeline that expires tomorrow. But the concern with this is the environmental danger it presents, according to environmentalists and critics, correct? That's correct, and I would argue that the existing pipeline as it exists, it sits in the, the Straits of Mackinac, right on the lake bed, right. uh, but it was designed to do that. Uh, it is a very robust, uh, thick pipe that is designed to do that. Even, uh, even though that is the case, uh, the, the uh, owner-operator uh, made an agreement with Michigan 
pre-Governor Whitmer right. to build a tunnel down into the bedrock to replace that environmentally sensitive piece of pipeline. Uh, but the governor ran on the fact that she'd close it down even though there were plans and $100 million invested uh, it, for this new uh, uh, pipeline that takes the risk from where it is now, minimal, which FIMSA, the, feg, uh, the federal regulatory authority that rules on this, to absolute mm -hmm. statistical zero. Uh, but that wasn't good enough for Governor Whitmer. Uh, I can't imagine that the administration is going to side on the side of this outlying uh, philosophy. At this point, uh, no doubt, and especially considering what's happening. Scott, on the way out, what do you think happens? How does this resolve? I think that uh, a more sober, pragmatic approach uh, to energy uh, 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 policy across the nation uh, applies. I think we save uh, thousands of good union jobs. I think we uh, preserve the supply chains and contain costs by leaving that line open. That's my prediction. All right. We will see. Scott Hayes, Toledo Refining Company, Governmental Affairs Manager. Again, I know you have a lot going on. We appreciate you sharing some time with us. Thanks, Joe. Thank you for watching. Click the red subscribe button below so you can get more of News Nation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.